interested in bringing peace to the region has to bear in mind the very serious learning curve that Israelis went through when, after the withdrawal from Gaza in 2005, they got not peace from Gaza but rocket fire, thousands and thousands of rockets. So what they've been trying to do since is to stop the rocket fire. And as I say, in, since 2007, and Hamas uh, did a coup, a military coup in the Gaza and killed their fellow Palestinians from Fatah and other parties. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. Hope you are feeling good. Today we are here again with another video from Douglas Moore titled Douglas Murray on BBC Daily Politics debating Israel Hamas fighting wow I believe this is going to be an interesting one let's check it out go well, I'm joined now by Douglas Murray of the think tank, the Henry Jackson Society, and by the Labour MP, Roshanara Ali. Welcome to both of you. Roshanara Ali, is there anything realistically that the West, the European Union, the British government can actually do to solve this conflict? Well, we need the European Union and including the British government to work together uh, to show leadership and also to act as an honest broker. And what we've seen yet again is that Israel has shown complete disregard for humanitarian issues. Um, some 600 people are now dead, mainly civilians, uh, 100,000 seeking refuge. And we need the European Union to be a strong voice in recognizing, of course, Israel needs to maintain its security security, but its reaction and response is not proportionate, and we need the European Union, including the British government, to speak up uh, and work towards res resuming peace negotiations, which have been completely elusive over recent years. How does Israel maintain its security without this sort of violence that escalates? Well, this sort of violence and the uh, death of so many people, particularly Palestinians, of course, there have been casualties on the Israeli side as well, but the vast majority have been uh, Palestinians, um, won't secure Israel, uh, won't provide long-term security. What we need is the international community to work together. But also, Israel needs to respect international humanitarian law, international law generally, and that's not happening. Has Israel disregarded um, humanitarian and international law by going into Gaza in the way they have? No, not at all. Um, apart from anything else, the uh, very muted response, and indeed in many cases a very encouraging response for Israel from the international community, is I think testament to the fact that it is playing not just by the rules, but by the most stringent rules imaginable. The reason why uh, the casualties exist in the Gaza is obviously because Israel is trying as an operational objective to stop Hamas and other jihadist groups from firing rockets mm. into Israel. In order to do that, Israel is carrying out a very, very targeted campaign. Now, it is inevitable in that that, that civilians are going to be killed as well. And one of the reasons why that is happening, it, excuse me, if I just finish, one of the reasons why that's, it's targeted, because they are trying to get the launch pads for the, from the, that the rockets are coming from. Now, one of the reasons why there is a problem from this, of course, killed. is that Hamas has, and incidentally CNN has the tape of this, among others, uh, has been encouraging the people of Gaza to, quote, protect the houses of Hamas commanders, to actually congregate around areas which the Israelis have dropped leaflets and texted civilians to say this area is going to be hit. Hamas has actually tried to maximize the casualties. So that's the first point. As for how this is to be stopped, I think there's a very important thing that we do not, in, in the international community does not simply perpetuate this conflict in trying to stop Israel from achieving the operational objective of stopping the rocket fire. The international, this, is how, this is the third right. time now that this has happened. Well, and I would suggest... It's more than the that, third time, No, actually. the third time there has there's been, been this exchange since 2007. Right. OK. I mean, we'll look at the operational and, and, and what actually both sides are hoping to achieve. But, Rajan Ali, you told a demonstration at the weekend that David Cameron had failed to show international leadership. My party is with you and the Labour Friends of Palestine are with you. Um, do you have Ed Miliband's support for your line on this conflict? Well, Ed Miliband has made it absolutely clear that uh, the, the incursion, the ground incursion, he said this only yesterday uh, as well, the ground is incursion is not uh, one that is supported. Uh, we recognise Israel's uh, uh, demand, as Ed Miliband has said, to um, uh, for its security, but its response has been disproportionate. Yeah, could, and the point about international leadership is if you look at what David Cameron said in 2010, he described the blockade of Gaza as an open prison. Uh, Gazan people are suffering. Uh, and what there seems to be but a collective is that the fault amnesia. Of, Hamas as well as Israel? of course, these groups, the point is that the public 
the public, you know, Palestinians are suffering, and the international community has a responsibility to respond to right. the needs of those people. I must just ask you, uh, Douglas Murray, on, on the issue of operations, the last 10 years there have been a series of ground and air operations by the Israeli Defence Forces on Hamas, um, and there are at least half a dozen of these. The rockets still continue yeah. to come yeah. into Israel. So the argument could be, are these Palestinians, innocent Palestinian civilians, losing their lives for nothing? The Israelis are not achieving their aims. The rockets continue from Hamas, and all right, you are saying that uh, they they hide their munitions, their rockets, and militant leaders in civilian buildings. But in the end, the Israelis have not stopped the rockets coming in, and more Palestinians are dying. I mean, anyone interested in bringing peace to the region has to bear in mind the very serious learning curve that the Israelis went through when, after the withdrawal from Gaza in 2005, they got not peace from Gaza but rocket fire, thousands and thousands of rockets. So what they've been trying to do since is to stop the rocket fire. And as I say, in, since 2007, Hamas uh, did a coup, a military coup in the Gaza and killed their fellow Palestinians from Fatah and other parties. The Israelis have, on three major occasions now, gone in. Now, the problem with this is that the international community tends to allow Israel some weeks in order to achieve the operational objective. Mm. They're and going then, to lose then, international support, exactly. aren't they, now, the, Israel? The, the, with and the crucial thing, just to add on this, is it is very important that Israel is allowed to win at some point. The international community is quite good at prolonging mm. the conflict precisely by All not right. allowing Israel to achieve what, what its operational objective. What does a win look like in, in this case? I mean, can there ever be a military solution to this problem of particularly Gaza and Israel rather than the West Bank and Israel? It's a platitude, but it happens to be true here. There are going to be no winners here, whatever the outcome. Uh, I think that, you know, if I can speak personally, my, my heart is rather with what Roshanara says. However, I have two caveats. One is I really dislike the tendency, particularly from the media here, always to put Israel in the dock here. Um, the truth of the matter is that the people of Gaza actually voted for Hamas. Mm -hmm. And they voted knowing what would happen. Hamas has been very clear it has no intention of, of making peace with Israel. So actually, you know, this is a horrible, cruel thing to say. This is a result of a democratic outcome. And by the way, the, the, the really bigger issue here is Egypt because that's what's really made the big difference here. So I think... And Egypt is, worried also, is also worried about being on the border the, 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 with Gaza. The peculiar thing is Israel and Egypt, relative to Gaza, are in exactly the same position mm. right now. Yes. So I think that the, the notion of the way that we tend to report this, which is it's Israel versus mm. suffering mm. Palestinians, is just not right. That's right. not what this is about. I mean, Rishanara Ali, what is it that Hamas wants to achieve? I mean, what is it? I mean, Trevor Phillips says that people voted for Hamas as opposed to Fatah, to the Palestinian Authority in the West Bank. They voted for Hamas knowing that they would be much more hard line. So what is it that they want? I hope what Trevor's not saying is that by voting for Hamas, those who voted were um, in some way uh, are now uh, deserve or you know the punishment collective punishment that is now being it's not espoused no, that's an no, let me finish thing to say. let me finish but the, but, but the, you know it's not, not what I'm I, hope, at all. I, hope, I very much hope not but the, the point is that this is this cycle of violence is going on and on uh, the fact is that the Palestinians have lived under occupation and Gaza They're not uh, under has occupation been, they have they, their own they state are, they have, the Gaza that's nonsense. Is, is, is a state that's and it is and run by Hamas and they had one election the which, as Trevor people, said, the people voted for Hamas. Hamas then killed the other, the opposition, and they've never had an election right. since. But they could have a state. So let's if have, they wanted a state, they could have let's, a state. Let Roshanara finish her point. You're saying that they are the living under is, there occupation. There seems to be a bit, of an, a bit of amnesia here about the history of what's happening in that region and the fact that Palestinians don't have a state. They have, you know, lived under occupation. They've lived under attack. And what we need is rapidly, uh, in order to secure peace, uh, which is rapidly eluding uh, uh, this well, region. We, ha we need the international community. We need leaders uh, in America and to European Union to work together precisely? to resume negotiations and to, first of all, bring an end to this conflict. Well, and that's the, end fire, conf the end of the conflict will be fastest brought about day. by Hamas being thrown out of the West Bank by the Palestinians of the West Bank or by mm. any other force uh, available. We've got to remember this. The two-state solution, such as it is, and it's a dream, but it's still a possible dream if you talk, talk about the West Do Bank. The Israeli 
believe in that. Yes, I think they do. Okay. With the West Bank, the thing that is a problem and is an irreconcilable problem at the moment is what you do with Hamas, which wants to annihilate the Jewish state and does not want peace. That is a Nobody problem. Right. Right. I mean, the, is problem the, pro the real problem Nobody here is the agenda is now being controlled by people who don't want peace, whether it is the On settlers the, and so West, yeah. uh, West Bank or That's right. it's Hamas. That's, right. That's the Absolutely. problem. How do we wrest the agenda do out of the hands of those groups of people who, yeah. by the way, yeah. are not states? Yeah. These are gangs. Mm. Sure. Let's, and unfortunately, Gaza is run by a gang. Let's, let's leave it there. Thank you both very much. Wow. What an interesting debate. Those were really, really heated. Wow. And I totally agree with the point uh, Douglas Murray stated. As we all know, Douglas is someone that is very articulated, very honest and sincere. He always stands by the truth. He's not afraid to say the truth. Wow. You can tell the conflict between Israel and Gaza, specifically Hamas, which has been labeled as a terrorist good group, has been going on for some time now. And I believe a lot of life have been lost, both in Israel and in Gaza. Though a lot of people tend to support Palestine, some tend to support Gaza, tend to support Hamas because they believe uh, the death rate uh, in Palestine and Gaza is higher as compared to the death rate uh, in Israel. Now, let me surprise you about, about that. And the death, uh, the death rate in Israel is not as high as compared to uh, Gaza. Because Israel are doing everything possible to protect uh, its citizen. They are doing everything possible, possible to defend the citizen. And from the information I got from one of the videos, I watched that the Israel that they are investing in building, I think, bunker. Uh, they are investing in building bunker. So when the uh when the when Hamas released a missile into Israel. Uh, the citizen can get some place to, to shield themselves. The citizen can get some place to shield themselves. But Hamas is not doing that. Instead of Hamas doing the same thing, building bunker to shield the civilian, instead they are they, they built bunker quite all right, but they are using the bunker to store their, their weapons and putting the civilians on top of the bunker. So Israel will be afraid uh, to launch any missile into into Gaza. And believe me, if you are in Israel position, if you are in Israel pos position and a missile is launched into your country, or let me give an example, you have children or you have two daughters or you have two sons uh, in a living in your building and someone launches a missile into that building your two sons or your two daughters are residing, are you going to fold your hands? I believe you are not going to fold your hands. You are going to do everything possible to defend your children. You are going to do everything possible to, to wipe out that entity that is trying to uh, uh, terminate your children, terminate your family. I believe if you are in Israel position, you are going to do the same thing. And we can all tell Hamas have been launching a series of missiles into the territory of Israel. And... Israel are doing everything possible to also defend to also defend their people. As a result of that, uh, a lot of life have been lost in Gaza. I really feel for those that have lost their life. I feel very sad because you losing your loved ones is not something very easy. And we also have to understand that these things happen in war. These things happen in conflict. These things happen in war. I really feel for those, but not to be too emotional about this. In war, people die. I understand that. And I believe Hamas is not doing everything to protect its citizen. If Israel is building bunker to protect its citizen, so when Hamas launch a missile, the citizen can get a place to be able to shield themselves from the attack. And Hamas is not doing the same thing. So I believe Hamas is not protecting the citizen. And from the information I got, I don't know how true this is from the information I got on Google. And I believe Douglas also said it in this video that uh, before a missile is launched into Gaza, that Israel always inform uh, Gaza, always inform the civilian that at this day, at this hour, at this minute, 
a missile is going to be launched in this location. Civilians kindly evacuate this location. A missile is going to be launched. Israel always informed the civilian so they can get a place to uh, protect themselves so they won't be affected by the missile. But Gaza is using the civilians as shield. Instead of uh, Hamas, uh, Hamas is using the civilians as shield. Instead of Hamas granting the civilian permission to go, uh, to go away from the location the missile is going to be launched, uh, they rather... Uh, they rather suppress the civilian to to gather themselves around that location. The missile is going to be launched, so they will prevent Israel from launching the missile. So I feel that is totally that is totally unacceptable. I can remember around 2005, Israel gave up the governance of uh, of Gaza, and according to statistics, at about 10,000 Israeli residing in Gaza, was forced out of Gaza uh, by the IDF soldier, by Israel IDF soldier. And I believe this Israeli that was forced out of Gaza, they have land in Gaza, they have houses in Gaza, they have properties in Gaza, but they were forced out by uh, Israel IDF soldier out of Gaza in order to be able to maintain peace with Gaza. And what happened after Israel gave up the governance of Gaza? You can tell the people of Gaza they voted Hamas into power. And when Hamas came into power, Hamas silenced all the opposition. And ever since then, even the peace treaty, the ceasefire, uh, Israel signed with uh, Gaza before leaving the land, uh, Hamas decided to break the agreement. And ever since then, Hamas have, has continuously launched missile into Gaza. So I believe if I'm in Israel position, I'm going to do the same thing to defend my people, to defend my citizen. And you can tell in the in the process of Israel trying to defend itself and retaliating, uh, a lot of people are losing their life in Gaza. Not because of the missile Israel is releasing, but I believe it's because of Hamas is using the civilians as shield. If you are given notice to evacuate a, a location that a missile is going to be released, I see no reason why you should remain in such location. So I believe Hamas is using the civilian as shield. And you can tell in this debate, uh, they, they never agreed with each other. But I I believe at, at, at one point, the lady that was supporting uh, the politician that kept supporting Hamas, kept supporting Palestine because of a lot of people have lost their life at a point, uh, he's, he made a suggestion that if it's possible for a two-state solution, if the the United States, uh, the United uh, Nation can, the United uh, uh, Nation can also come in. If Europe can come in, uh, American can come in. The British can also come in in order to facilitate a two-state solution between Israel and Gaza. And I believe I would really love to see that happen. But I believe. That is really far from reality because Hamas in question uh, is a terrorist group and I believe Hamas is not going to accept to that terms. And I believe the only way this problem can be solved, even after a two-state solution, I believe Hamas should be dealt with. They should be dealt with. If you have been voted into power democratically, you are supposed to protect the interest of the citizen by, you know, uh, by defending the citizen. But uh, you, since you came into power, you can tell since Hamas came into power, Gaza has become poorer. A lot of infrastructure situated in Gaza, like hospital, like good road, are no more. You can tell right now living in Gaza is really, really difficult. Living in Gaza is really difficult. The citizens are living in fears because they don't know the next minute a missile is going to be released to the location they had. They are living in fears. And I believe Hamas should be dealt with if not uh democratically or politically voted out of power i believe is a mass should be dealt with and the people of palestine should find a better way of dealing with a mass i believe a mass is the genesis of all this problem i blame a mass for what is really happening currently so i've really learned a lot just listening to douglas murray and every one of the speaker i believe a two-state solution would be something nice if this issue, this conflict can be settled amicably without continuous loss of life. I believe this is going to be something good. So 
I would also like to hear your comments. Keep the conversation rolling. Don't forget, click on the subscribe button. Click on the like button. Do have a nice day. Thank you.